Hey everyone, I'm Irma and welcome to our new series, Cooking Websites, where I'll share three web design tools that I use all the time and that help me put the ideas that are in my head onto the page. I'll show you how I personally like to use the tools in real website building situations so you can get to see it all in action. So I drew up this quick and simple website prototype for a product, so let's make it real. One of the first steps I like to figure out is the color palette, but I'm not the most gifted in this area naturally, so I get help from Adobe Color. This tool offers a plethora of options, but I like to jump straight to the explore section. And here you can browse through color palettes. Maybe there's something that already catches your eye, but we're building a page for a product. So what I like to do in this case is upload an image. I found this cute photo of a lemonade on Pexels, which is a little bonus tool for stock images. And here we go. There are a bunch of color palette suggestions for any taste. If you like more green, more yellow, it will show you almost every possible combination. I like this one the most. Now you can add this to your library, copy and paste them, uh, use it as a reference. But if you click on create using theme, you can adjust each individual color before you save the whole color palette. So that may be helpful as well. And now I'm just jumping into the editor and starting to build the page. I'm making the structure, adding text and images based on the prototype, but I'm leaving out most of the styling because that's what we'll do a little later. Continue watching if you want to see me make an angry face at the screen, but I do promise it's just my concentration phase. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't know already, I'm building the page with the WP Bakery page builder. Okay, and here's the lemonade page. I've already added some content, mostly just default values with no styling to it. So we can start by adjusting the colors. So first things first, we can use this green for some accent text. Let's make this road the same color as well. Now for the smaller text, we can make it a lighter version of this green. Let's see how this one looks. Okay, that's, that's way too green. Let's take this one and just make it lighter. Okay, that's better. Okay. 
Okay, last ones. All right, the first step is done. I know it looks a little bit rough, but trust me, it will come together in the end. So the next thing I was thinking, I wanted to add a shape divider like here, but maybe make it a pattern. So they're just not so bland and boring. So how I would go about making a pattern would just by taking an icon. So my next favorite tool is SVG Repo, which has a lot of SVG icons, perfect for if you want to manipulate them later in any photo editing software that you use. So for this case, I want it to be a little lemon. Let's see. I really like this one. And what I would do next is just go to Figma. That's just uh, editing software that I use. Change the color of the lemon so that the contrast of the background of the lemon is really low. So it would kind of blend in the background, but at the same time, give a little bit of an interesting look, something to uh, break just the one big slab of background. <laughs> Let's try this color as the color of the shape divider. Now you'll just have to do a bunch of copy pasting until you've got yourself a beautiful little image of a pattern. Okay, that's added to our page. So now there's a little bit more like in it. Next, one thing that just sticks out the most in this is obviously this blend of black text right here. So fonts are also something that I sometimes struggle with um, finding the right one, like the uh, primary and the secondary font. Um, so I like to look for inspiration on resources like uh, Awards, Behance and Dribbble. And sometimes when you find a pretty font there, they don't say what font is it, but fear not, we can find it. So I'm in Dribbble right now. Um, I'm looking for like a cursive uh, font and okay. I think I really like this one, but let's say that's it. That's the picture. What's the font? Just take a screenshot of it. And now go to what's the font and upload the image. Select all of it, identify font and here we go. A list of fonts that could potentially be that one and similar fonts. This looks exactly like the one and judging by the name. So you have to technically pay for it, but judging by the name, I somehow feel that it's a Google font. That's a little magic trick you pick up from building websites for a long time. So let's check. Google fonts. What was it? Covered. I knew it. I knew it. Now you can get it for free and add it to your site. And now just watch how the whole layout will come to life with this one simple font change. Ah. Isn't that a thousand times better? <laughs> Let's make all H2s this font. Okay, this one as well. <laughs> you saw much better. Oh, that is a thousand times better. And the little tweaks here and there, our landing page is done. These were the first 
three of my favorite web design tools. Like this video if you want to see helpful tools and how to use them. And feel free to comment on the tools that you can't live without. I would love to see them. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on episode two of Cooking Websites.